Hi guys, how do you like my new do? <laughs> so Jay and I are going to a, a big company event. It's a it's the annual awards ceremony that we have. It happens every February, and this year's theme is the Roaring Twenties. So I need to come up with a look or an outfit, both actually that would tie into that theme. So one of the things that I was thinking about, the wig that I showed previously, I'll, I'll insert a picture here somewhere. I thought with that blonde, blonde look, I could maybe go as a Hollywood, you know, uh, movie star. <laughs> you know, like Jean Hollow wish but not Jean Hollow, with my fur coat and maybe a long dress of some sorts. And, you know, when I could deck out that wig to really look roaring 20s or, movie starish and I could wear exaggerated makeup and stuff like that so I thought that would be a really good option okay. and then I got this wig and I looked at this and I said hmm if I put like beads around my head somehow maybe a feather or something let me turn and show you the back of this because I think this is like so sassy and so cool looking You see how this is like tapered, wedged to this side? Anyways, I thought that I could somehow create a Roaring Twenties look with this hair. But I'm not too sure. So I'm really coming up against a wall as far as ideas for outfits. So if any of you guys have been to a Roaring Twenties party or event, you have any suggestions for outfits, no mini skirts, no sleeveless numbers. No, I don't have the arms for sleeveless. I don't have the legs or the butt for a mini skirt. So, and I thought first, like maybe I could get a dress and then get a long black slip and somehow sew fringe onto the bottom of it, because everything I was seeing on Amazon is short dresses, and I don't, I don't want a short dress. So, roaring twenties. I think this hair might work. Either that or the blonde. I'm not too sure. But let me just um, share this with you. I'll enclose an unboxing on this this um, this wig because this is like really super cool. For those of you that are not into wigs, I'll leave a timestamp for the, the makeup that I'm going to talk about. But this is Envy and this is in this is Hopper in Ginger Cream. I think this is kind of really cool. This is a different look for me, for sure. Um... I had to play with the bangs a little bit. I think I still have to spray her to take down some of the the shine a little bit. But um, I think she's pretty sassy looking, and I think it's I think it's actually kind of a, a a cool look. Now this color is a little bit darker than my normal colors, but I think I think the ginger cream is not too bad. It's probably more in line with my cappuccino that I have in my Raquel Welch wig that I really like. But this is pretty interesting. So brand name brand wigs was having this huge sale the week before New Year's. And like one day, everything was like 50% off, certain items, I should say. The next day, 55. So each day it went up until January 1st was 70. Of course, by the time it got to the 70, you were sort of like spinning the wheel because you just didn't know if you were going to luck out and get a piece you wanted. I did luck out in a way, although the colors might be different. I just thought this was fun. So what I want to talk about today is foundations. I want to try to address some of the questions that I've had from some of you regarding foundations. And first of all, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know that my favorite drugstore foundation for the longest time was actually my Boots Number no. 7 Lift and Luminate. Wheat is my color in Lift and Luminate. This has, for the longest time, been what I would go to day in and day out. It is more of a light coverage. It isn't long lasting on me. So in other words, when I would put this on, I always have to touch up during the day which is not a big deal because I feel I have to touch up anyways during the day with sunblock and things of that nature. This has an SPF of 15, which is not bad at all. However, I never rely on foundation SPFs. It, they're just sort of like an added layer and that's it, but nothing I would ever rely on. So I use this for the longest time until I got, and I still have a couple of bottles of the CYO left. I have actually, a couple of bottles of the CYO that are unopened, but they're too dark for me. 
probably give those away. Um, so I have the CYO, which is also a Boots product, and once I discovered the CYO, that became my drugstore favorite. This was long-lasting. I could build it up to a full coverage. I think it says it's a medium coverage. It was just a beautiful, beautiful foundation day in, day out. I love this for drugstore. And, and the, that was my drugstore dream come true. And I had tried many, many drugstore. Essence, CoverGirl, uh, Revlon, Avon, The Ordinary's foundations. I've tried a number of drugstore foundations and they've all been a super, super big fail as have some high-end. When I first started talking about skincare three years ago on my YouTube channel, I got the It Cosmetic CC Cream. I, I mean, I tried because I was impressed with the 50 SPF and everyone raved about this. And I know, you know, I know this works for some people and every product doesn't work the same for everyone. I get that. I could not get this to work. I really couldn't. And I tried. I really tried to make these work. I could not get them to work, and they're high end. They were they were not inexpensive foundations. So I really, for the longest time, just gravitated to drugstore. And after when I heard that the CYL was going away, and then I heard that the Kick Ass Foundation was the dupe for the CYO, same company, same bottle. Same composition, lasts the same, looks the same, everything is the same. Love this foundation, the Kick Ass. This is the Soap and Glory Kick Ass. I have the shade number four and number five. Love, love, love this. This has replaced the CYO, which they are discontinuing, as you know, and this is like three times the price of the of the CYO. So if you can get this kick ass on sale, which you can usually, or use your Ulta points, you buy it in Walgreens and you have Walgreens points, it's a really good buy. And I, you know, and it's a great, great product. I also started to use the beginning of the year, the Estee Lauder. And when I bought my first bottle of Estee Lauder, I was in the cosmetic company store and the cosmetic company store in my area, it's tax-free New Hampshire. Oftentimes there are discounts and coupons and all that stuff. I got my first bottle of the Estee Lauder, Lauder Foundation and I have Pebble. I got it for like 20 some odd dollars. It was amazingly reasonable. I love, love, love this foundation. Hands down, this is my number one foundation on what I call a high-end, meaning not drugstore. It builds up really nice. It's a full coverage. It doesn't look awful on my skin, doesn't dry me out. I have very dry skin, so I normally have to use some sort of, you know, moisturizer, oil on my skin before I start the whole process. I'll tell you the truth. Since I've been using the CBD oil, I've been able to manage my dry skin and my Retin-A flakes so much better. Ah, love that stuff. Anyways, I don't want to talk about CBD. Uh, so this has been my number one foundation. Recently, however, about eight months ago, I was sent this from the Octoly Network, YSL. So Octoly Network, they will send content creators free products in exchange for a look and tell, show and tell, so to speak, video or Instagram. So I got sent this from YSL. I absolutely love this foundation. It is beautiful. It applies beautiful. It looks beautiful on my skin. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's wicked expensive. I wouldn't buy it because it's so expensive. I'm just not going to spend that kind of money on a foundation, but I did love using it. However, the other, aside from price, the, the other drawback for me on this was the, the denatured alcohol in this foundation was high up in the ingredients list. I know you're gonna find denatured alcohol in a lot of cosmetics. It, it is a fact. And I judge it this way. How far up on the ingredients list is it? And I realized, too, I'm going to use a primer on my skin. I'm going to have a buffer. So, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to harm me because I'm not going to use it every day. So to me, the YSL is special, special, special. I still have maybe a little less than half of a bottle left in here. And, and I like this a lot. I just wish it didn't have the high alcohol count. And it was a bit more affordable. The other high-end foundation that I have that I bought is I at Christmas time, right before the holidays, you know, they all have their gift sets and their, you know, trunk cases and, you know, all that stuff. So I got sucked into buying the Lancome trunk case. It's jam-fold of products that I would use with the exception of a few. 
but I, you have to buy a product. And that gave me the excuse in my mind to finally buy this foundation that I have been wanting to buy. It also has alcohol in it, pay, you know. But anyways, I bought this and this is absolutely lovely. I love this foundation. I, it's beautiful. Now, my three that I would say are my favorite to date on my high ends, I would not replace either one of these when they go. To be honest with you, I would not replace, that's just me. I would definitely replace my Estee Lauder. So I'm enjoying the heck out of my Lancome foundation. I'm enjoying the heck out of the YSL. I just wouldn't pay the money for it. I, I just really wouldn't. I recently also got the Peach Perfect. I bought this in, in um, Sephora when Jay and I were down in Newport, Rhode Island. <laughs> go shopping in Sephora when we're away. And this says it's a 12 hour or more foundation and that's absolutely the truth so this is really a cool foundation it's a little bit more of a warmer tone for me and i think this would be more perfect uh maybe in the spring and summer but i'm absolutely loving when i put this on i don't need any kind of bronzing because this has that warmer tone for me so these two are really great i do want to try the born this way foundation and see how i like that compared to the rest I was also recently sent, and I talked about this in my last video, the number seven Hydro Luminous. This is the one that you can only find in the UK. And I must tell you that if this comes to the States, this will be my number one drugstore foundation. I put this on, it covered beautifully. It didn't dry out. It, it rivaled these. It rivaled my high ends as far as how it looked and how it wore. I absolutely love this foundation. Again, it's not in the States, so when it becomes available in the States, it will be my number one and kick-ass will be delegated to another position. But I love this foundation. I do use a primer on my skin, and most of you know that I've been using the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. It is the best primer. So recently I got sent this primer from Carnes and this is their SOS primer and this, I got the green for redness. So as a color corrector and primer all in one, because even with my putty primer that I use, I use a color corrector underneath it. So I chose green because my biggest area are my pores around my nose and this a little tiny bit, and you're not going to see it on my hands, but a little tiny bit, and I put it on my trouble spots to kind of neutralize or to attempt to neutralize the veins of the redness because I would do that anyways with a different product. So I'm not going to use this all over my face. I don't even use my e.l.f. putty primer all over my face. I put it here. I put it on my nose. I go into my chin. I go up here. So this I only used here where my redness is. And you could do that. You could put this where your redness are, is. And then you've got a primer and a corrector all at once. It's really pretty cool. So I really like this. I've only been using a short period of time. This was sent to me via the Octoly Network from Clarence, and I appreciate it. It was sent to me in exchange for a review, and I appreciate the opportunity to try it and have the selection I wanted, which was the green to neutralize the red, and I think it works really good. I like it a lot, and again, my e.l.f., my drugstore, I, to me, I'm thinking that is the overall best primer ever <laughs> for me. Um, so from the high ends, I mean, you guys asked about high ends, and I've got more high ends I hadn't even talked about. Um, the Pure, yeah. I've also got a, a number of Kevin Aquans that I've used and have not been able to make work for me. It's a difficult process, I think, to find a foundation that is affordable that you really like. And I really hope this is available in the States because it truly does rival the high ends that I like. And, you know, when you look at YSL luxury, when you look at Lancome luxury, in my opinion, and I know this door, there's more foundation Chanel. I haven't tried any of those, and, and I know they're, they're probably lovely, but I'm just not going to pay the money to rebuy this. You know, and again, this was sent to me quite a while ago. So I hope that answers some of your questions on foundations. And Jay and I are getting ready to 
while we're looking around for airline flights for a trip this summer and I'm going to be very, very limited on my luggage. And so literally during this trip this summer, I'm going to be bringing one foundation, one or two lipsticks, one or two lip pencils, and one mascara, one eyelash primer. I'm, it's going to be narrowed down to one of everything. And I, I'm probably going to put together a Z palette for my eyeshadows because I'm not going to bring a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be very active outdoorsy vacation and I can't wait so I don't need a whole lot of makeup but when you really start thinking about oh, if you could only bring one truly if you can only bring one what would you bring and that to me the answer to that is pretty telling so anyways yeah that's that's it in a nutshell I mean I could I don't know I think I could make this work somehow with a roaring 20s look what do you guys think? <laughs> I'm being silly, right? Anyways, I'd love your suggestions on costume ideas, how I can improvise one. And yeah, what do you what are your thoughts on the foundations too? Is there another foundation that I should be considering trying? Again, you know, uh, my channel is supported in a very minor way by the links, you know, if you buy through a link that I put for magic links and all that stuff. So I'm limited as to what I would spend just to try makeup. And I just can't bring myself, and I know some, I know people do it. I just can't bring myself to just buy something to share it on a video and then return it. I just can't bring myself to do that. I'd rather buy something that I really want to buy that I think might make a difference and that I really like. And if it doesn't work for me, then I kind of give it away. I can give it to one of my daughter-in-laws. I can give it to my sister. I've got nieces. And every now and then I'll put together a little basket and I'll bring it into my office. And usually what I put in there ends up going pretty quickly. So, yeah, I just can't get to the thought process about go out and buying something to do a review on it. And I'm not criticizing. I mean, it's it's okay. No, people can't afford to to buy a bunch of makeup. That's for sure. At least I know I can't. So everyone's got to do what they got to do. But anyway, so anyways, what I was saying is I truly appreciate if you do use a magic, click a magic link or one of my affiliate links below because it do earns me, it does earn me a little bit of money. Not a whole lot, but a little bit of money. So that's it, guys. Wrong 20s.